Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another thrilling virtual exploration of the South Sound region. Tonight, we're looking at South Tacoma Way, and all of this is brought to you by the City of Tacoma's Historic Preservation Office. And they've enlisted my help over here at Pretty Gritty Tours to help make that a reality and to, to bring the good news to everybody. And I, I can't tell you just how much I love doing tours of and for South Tacoma Way. I feel like, especially on the West Coast, right, where where the, the history of American expansion is still so relatively young and so much of the development was done in wood and then lost or destroyed as everything rapidly expanded really quickly from the early 1900s onwards. And in a territory of things that are sort of just whispered identities that get drowned out in the wind of change. There is a clear and distinct voice in Tacoma in particular, and especially on South Tacoma Way. It is a deep and churning diesel train engine. It is a throaty 1950s V8 drag racing at night. It is a loud, unapologetic sense of self that has maintained its structural integrity and identity over a hundred years. And going down South Tacoma Way, you not only get to see a lot of that identity still present there, proud in these neighborhoods, but you actually get to see a lot of the historic structures preserved and still being used today. And that's what we're doing tonight, my friends. I get the distinct pleasure of introducing you to the South Tacoma Way neighborhood and what is there now and what used to be there back in the day. And what's cool, you'll see in a second, is that when we go through a lot of these, you can really do crisp, you know, then and nows uh, because they were really nicely documented back when they were constructed in the early 1900s or 1880s or 1920s. Those are kind of our three zones. And then they are there today, really relatively unchanged. So whew, let's do this, man. I, I love South Tacoma Way. Uh, back, back in the golden years, right? We used to do this as an in-person tour. It is something that I'm looking forward to doing as an in-person tour again. And look at the turnout for that one. People were always stoked to get out and explore South Tacoma Way. And of course, it has a rich legacy. Uh, this particular shot is kind of uh, a good example of what the area was famous for because in this was in 1908. And South Tacoma Way was the Northern Pacific Railroad headquarters for their machine shops, their, their repair facilities. And this is the type of um, steam locomotive that was serviced in this area. And before it was train zone, this was the indigenous area, uh, which was a, a wide prairie. It was a prairie land used for hunting and gathering. And as people started to come out and colonize the area, it became known as Hunt's Prairie. And then it hit this transitional phase where the machine shops for the Northern Pacific Railroad were downtown Tacoma. Someone apparently was like, this makes sense. <laughs> Nothing can get crowded in between this tall hill and the ocean. And so eventually they're like, oh, shoot, we're actually going to need some space. And so as Tacoma expanded, they pushed everything down onto the prairie land because it was nice and flat. And it was in between the sort of Portland terminus and the, the Tacoma yards. And so you had a lot of easily gradable expanse out there to put in a ton of train shops. And boy, did they. Uh, you could see them all the way up into like the, the 1960s. A lot of these train repair shops and brick structures down there were the main facility. In fact, the claim to fame was that all of the major repair work for the railroad west of the Mississippi was done here on South Tacoma Way in the Northern Pacific and then later Union Pacific Trail uh, train yards. And to accommodate the workers that were out there, uh, there sort of just sprung up a neighborhood because people were like, well, shoot, uh, we could just build a house right next to work and I don't have to worry about the commute. And so the straight line 
uh, very, very railroad mentality, right? Like you've got your, your railroad and your yard, everything's in a straight as line as they can get it. And so they just essentially hop off the tracks, start building a neighborhood and everything that comes with it, houses, churches, grocery stores, saloons, so on, all right there. And then really, as you look through time, the flip book of years, it stayed in exactly that. And a big uh, sort of core, core, I guess, driving force, <laughs> if you'll forgive my pun, to the whole thing was that as the railroad transitioned and it became the age of the automobile, South Tacoma Way was originally Highway 99. And so if you were going to come from Southern California up along the coast, you would come directly through South Tacoma Way. And it really wasn't until that entire dream got killed in the 1960s by the installation of Interstate 5, which you can say whatever you want about Interstate 5. It, it's faster, I guess. But the, the sad part of an interstate, right, is that it is this like hyperdrive tube specifically designed to prevent you from getting off along the way and the entire culture and identity of Highway 99 and in particular this area on South Tacoma Way was as a stopover. First as the railroad and then for these cars coming up from Oregon and California for the American road tripper. Uh, and it was everything that you could see and do along the way that really drew people to area and injected life into that neighborhood. So you really see, I think, the, the greatest decline once I-5 comes in. Now, this is of the Northern Pacific uh, Railroad Yards down there in their, in their early days. Again, this one was taken in 1908, but you could have seen a lot of these throughout time. And if today you go down to South Tacoma Way, you would see the Sounder, right? So the Sounder station on its journey south or north, I guess it depends where you're coming from, can stop here in South Tacoma Way. And the brick building that's there, that is an events space today, that the name is eluding me, is part of that original train yard there. And if you look at it, I don't have the picture, unfortunately. Um, it had a 80, like a tunnel, essentially, a tube that went from where the, the warehouse is across the street, the big white warehouse, to that brick building. And they could send cargo from one building to the other. Uh, and we had someone on one of the tours, I think like four years ago, who when he was a kid, it was his job to slide through that tube and make sure that things weren't clogged. He's was, he was, uh, a cargo monkey running around in there, making sure that things could get uh, passed. So let's see here. Oh, no. Are the, are the pics showing up now? I, I want to make sure. Here we go. Okay, it looks like things are working now. Do let me know. I was so amped on the history, I, I lost it for a second. So one of the beautiful examples, both of the train legacy still down there and of cool historic structures, this is Ed Garceau's dry goods store. This was built in 1903. And if you look at it today, it is untouched. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is the original storefront preserved down there on South Tacoma Way. They've added like a, a paint job to the bricks, but very little else. And one of the things that was cool about this in the early 1900s is it was the first kind of example of the recessed window. And they did that L shape with the windows, A, so that you would have more real estate to show off your goods, right? You didn't have to cramp all your dresses in a tiny little space. And uh, by recessing it, you prevented sun damage. One of the things that was prevalent at that time is that garments would get bleached by the sun if they were out in the window too long. And so you wanted something that was kind of under the shade. And you can see it has a little roller furl awning that could come out over those upper windows there. Today, uh, this is Rob's Trains and Hobbies, uh, home of online trains. It is a cash only model train store. It, I mean, if you're into trains, Wow, chef's kiss. This place is awesome. And it's a testament to that legacy, that railroad passion out there. This is an aerial shot of South Tacoma Way from 1926. And you can see uh, just how expansive the train yards were at that time. And here's the part that blows my mind. This was 
part of the Northern Pacific and then Union Pacific's railroad industry. They were doing train repairs and machine work out there until 1974. In 1974, when Union Pacific uh, merges, which would have been Burlington Santa Fe at the time, now BNSF, uh, that's when it goes away. So, you know, 74 wasn't really that long ago. I mean, it's getting farther away as every day passes. But uh, the fact that it was there that recently is extraordinary to me. And it's something that people overlook when they're in South Tacoma because uh, you literally can just drive past it and not know what was there. So let me show you the things that are still there today. This is one of my favorite shots. This is from 1913, looking north down uh, South Tacoma Way and really gives a good indication of what that neighborhood was about. And it was built for the railroad workers out there in those machine shops, right? And so you can look, this is that same corner now. Uh, that's Fern Seed, the plant shop right there on the right. And then you see... Uh, some of the other businesses over there, uh, Steve's Gay 90s, which we'll talk about in a little bit here, the Opal Lounge, all those are over there. And you can actually just uh, kind of match them up so that you see at least three of those buildings are the original ones that were there. And you just kind of have to match them up by their windows. And there is a really, if you go to the Tacoma Public Library's digital archive, their Northwest Room archive, there is a treasure trove you can go to the building index there and punch in the exact same addresses from South Tacoma Way that are there now and see these buildings in real time and beautifully documented. And that's unique. A lot of neighborhoods have changed dramatically over time. So you just kind of have to do some investigative work with a lot of them and see like, did an address change? Did a street name change? Something like that. Because you'll be looking for a building in the buildings index and it doesn't always match up with the address that you have now. South Tacoma Way, not an issue. I would say 98% of the structures on South Tacoma Way are in the original address and spot that they were when they were constructed, either in the late 1800s or the 1920s, kind of depending on which push you were looking at. One of the big differences, if you're down there today, is that a lot of people go and explore the Water Flume Line Trail. This is a Metro Parks Tacoma uh, curated walking trail that goes along the majority of South Tacoma Way, kind of just off the edge there. But it is on the exact outline of the 1885 Water Flume. And this was built to carry water from Spanaway Lake, believe it or not, all the way out in Spanaway Lake. And they would flow this water down to be the water source for Tacoma. And it was an open uh, wooden flume. You can see it here. Uh, it was prone to slime and things getting in it. And it was, it was nasty. So eventually they develop an underground system. It's replaced by pipes and more modern plumbing. But... In the, in the early days, the water flume was there, and then they just left that sort of blueprint there and then eventually converted it into the water flume trail. So you can, you can flow right along that today. Now, if you go to South Tacoma Way, we're kind of focusing on the area essentially between 42nd and 56th. That's, I think, really my main core that I focus on when I talk about South Tacoma Way. Just because I love that you can see those buildings. So like this one here, uh, the little Korean place, this was originally built in 1927. And it was like so many things out there, an independent grocery store for Tacoma. And over the years, a variety of businesses have been in there. I think uh, during the Depression era, when bicycles were the hip thing in town, it was South Tacoma Cycle. And then uh, a radio company went in there. It was a grocery business again, and then uh, it was the Sephamore Tavern, as what I think most people remember it as, in the 1950s. And this is what it looked like at that time. And you can see, other than the, the windows getting changed, a lot of that structure it, it remained the same. And one of the big key giveaways on this one is you see that little hump at the top there? You can still see it here today. Uh, this was inside when it was the tavern and it was a 
classy little joint. Now, this is one of my favorites. This was one of the first, um, like, built to last buildings out here. I always feel like, oh man, you know the like uh, Toyota Tundra commercials where they're like, every time I go out in the woods, I feel like that should be the voice that narrates South Tacoma Way, right? It's got to have that like gravelly American grit to it. Uh, this is a good example of one of those built to last buildings. This was the Northern Pacific Bank building in 1906. And because it was a bank for the railroad, they put a little extra money into making sure that it couldn't just get uh, knocked over or burned down. And in 1912, a German immigrant by the name of Peter Wallerich purchased uh, the business. And became super successful and eventually that led to the construction of a new building for the bank. And so this is what it looks like today. You can see, again, it's one of those ones that really has kept the integrity of that structure over the years. And man, I I love the Peter Waller story because uh, he was born in Germany in like 1867. He comes to the United States at 18, teaches himself English, works on a bunch of farms in Iowa, uh, just starts picking up skills that were foreign to people at the time. Like he learned to operate a telegram uh, and he was really good at math. So he eventually moves to Elmira, Washington, which uh, is always a, a sweet spot for me. All of my family on my mother's side is from Elmira. And the first Peter Wallerich bank is actually still out there. So this is the bank. Uh, as it was constructed in Elmira, where Peter got his start as a, a bank man. And he made enough money with that enterprise that he moved to Tacoma and essentially just went up that step ladder of success. But this is the building today. So the U.S. Post Office, I think one of two things still operating in the small town of Elmira on Highway 2 is still there. And it is, as you can see, the original uh, Peter Wallerich bank building there. And again, that's because it was on the rail line. He really just followed the, the railroad west until it arrived in Tacoma and ran out of places to go. And he ends up building uh, this with his success. So this is the North Pacific Bank building. Uh, obviously, they had a little more money and a little more juice, so they went bigger with their design. And you can still see this today. Uh, this is just on the corner down there. The address is 5446 South Tacoma Way. And when it was constructed in 1914, this is what it looked like. If you go to the corner of South 56 today, uh, you can see it. And it was a bank until just very recently, uh, like right at the beginning of COVID a thousand years ago. And I heard that there was a, a conversation about probably turning it into like a microbrew or something. I imagine those plans have been waylaid by pandemic, but um, there's, there's a lot of energy in the South Tacoma business community. And the, the business association down there is really active in taking these spaces and putting local entrepreneurs in there. And, and you'll see, we actually get to hear uh, from at least one of them tonight kind of about what's going on there. And there's a really just vivid, zealous sense of pride in that area. And I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, uh, there is. There's a, there's a, well, we'll see here in a second. There's a lot going on down there. So one of the extraordinary buildings just as a narrative but as a like actual structure itself is the real art theater now this was built in 1919 again you see a, a huge boom in the 1920s in tacoma as people are like you know what get rid of these old west buildings let's start building stuff with brick so it doesn't burn down and the real art was no exception to that and it was a direct response to the boom of people in the area who were living out here and wanted entertainment. They, they wanted to see silent films and by gosh, they wanted air conditioning. So uh, good Norwegian Radnar Prostic uh, decides that he's gonna open the real art. And man, this dude is like my hero, not just because he's Norwegian, but uh, because he's like, you know what? 
Anyone can build a movie theater. <laughs> I'm going to build one that has a soundproof uh, chamber at the back of it with a big glass window and uh, you can pipe the sound into it. And then women who have babies can go to the movies. And if the baby cries, well, no one has to hear it. And I'm like, where did we go wrong in history? Why is that not a thing anymore? Um, you just have to wait till your kids can sit down quietly. It was also a uh, state of the art because it had stroller pram parking because there was none of that fancy fold down stuff back in 1919. You had to park that sucker like a 1950s Buick somewhere. Uh, this was a great building. It could accommodate up to 500 patrons and operated until 1961 when it eventually closed and then sort of went through a metamorphosis of different restaurants. It was a Korean barbecue for a period there. It was the, uh, it eventually became the Golden Dragon restaurant. Golden Dragon Chinese was next door, but then they assimilated this building and did the biggest renovations to it. Uh, and then eventually it ended up like this. Uh, and they they knocked out so much of the front there that 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 facade, uh, like the the double doors and the box office, all of that is now permanently gone, and it was left like this. So you could see the upper part there really nicely historically preserved, uh, but the interior and that front face needed some tender love and care. And so back in 2018, I actually uh, went through. The building when it was empty it had just been a grow operation uh they were they were raising i forget who was doing it but there was a local business that had been growing marijuana inside the building and then they left it and it was empty and i think i've got a clip for you guys here so you can see you'll see the dramatic transformation in a moment but this is what it looked like when it was empty all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to the real art theater Built in 1919 by local Tacoma hero Radnor Prostic, or Prostic? I'm not actually sure on the pronunciation of his name, but he's an Iowa boy who moved to Tacoma and owned three theaters on South Tacoma Way, one of which is this one. And what we're looking at here is the upper level of the Real Art Theater. And as you can see, quite a bit has been added here. Um, but if you look over to the side, you can see the molding as it once was on top of the theater. And then way, way back there, difficult to see, is actually the proscenium arch of the theater. Now all of this ceiling has been hidden by just very uh, cheap ceiling right here. Uh, after it was done being a theater, uh, it was a dance hall for a period of time, and then it moved on to being a Chinese restaurant. Uh, after it was a Chinese restaurant, it was actually a marijuana grow up for a period of time. So I will I will put that up online later so that you can go through the whole thing because uh, it was really impressive to see the inside. But you get to see some some before and after here. And also, um, if you guys want to see the before and after pictures, don't worry. I'm going to have them all up on Facebook later and I'm going to link to the Tacoma Public Library's um, building index as well. And really, at the end of the day, more than anything, I want to encourage you guys to actually go out on South Tacoma Way uh, and get to experience it. And you'll see just how amazing it is. So this is the, the Real Art Theater today, and I'll let you take a look. So not this building specifically, that's the airport tavern, but across the street is the Real Art Theater. And you can see as we pan across here, what it looks like. Now, all of these are original right here as well. And there's the building as it stands right now. Uh, inside here, it has been transformed. What's going on everybody? Austin here with Theory Real Estate. We're a local real estate company here in town. Uh, we've been investing pretty heavily here in the South Tacoma neighborhood over the last few years. One of the first buildings we purchased was the old Real Art Theater. It's actually one of the first movie theaters in Tacoma, built in 1919, well over 100 years ago. And the last few years we've been uh, transforming it, revitalizing it back into its former glory. Uh, you'll see there's beautiful crown molding. It's an it's a amazing building. Uh, we're excited to see 
what type of events are held here. We'd love to have events that bring the community together, that really inspire Tacoma, and, uh, and celebrate the history of this amazing neighborhood. And what I love is that they did a really nice job of opening up that original theater space. So it's now uh, an event space down there. And what they did is they maintained the integrity and that like open ceiling of the theater itself, which was not an easy task. Uh, Cause you can see, cause they put all this fake ceiling there. And then that curvature of the original theater had been lost until just recently they, they managed to bring it back which is great. And so there's a lot going on down there. Um, Howdy Bagel is coming this summer, uh, right around next door there. And there are still some open spaces on South Tacoma Way. So I know that as people are looking for uh, areas to start developing a business, it's a good spot for it. And it has always been. So this is just across the street. This was built in 1928, as the stone on the very top confirms for me and was used until 1947 as the uh, the Zachary Vane Jewelry Company, as well as loans and insurance. It was kind of an all around financial institution. And over time, it transitioned. It was an apartment on the upper floor, I think until after World War II, uh, maybe into the 1950s, and then it became additional office space. And you can see here, there we go. So this is uh, a little bit further on in the building's history, but it still had some of those key features. Although one of the wackiest things I can't figure out for the life of me is why they put in those fishbowl round windows. Um, that fortunately did not last. They went through and they, they fixed that back to its original standing there. So this is what it looks like today. It's Tortas Locas on the bottom. And then I think it's office space up on the top there. Uh, but it was all driven by this guy. So this is Mr. Zachary Vane, a uh, pioneering Tacoma realtor. And he was a big time proponent for the city of Tacoma. And he felt very strongly that South Tacoma Way was the spot where the action was. And he wasn't wrong. Like I said, as the the automobile took over and put this place on the map, even more so than the train, one of the, the big draws to the area was this beauty right here. Now, I don't want you to mistake this for a teapot. It is absolutely not. It is a coffee pot. And it has been a coffee pot since 1927 when a local veterinarian had it commissioned by an artist and designed and built to be a breakfast place off of Highway 99. And then they're like, well, our breakfast is okay, but our coffee is great. And so eventually it became a coffee house right here. Now, while this doesn't fall into the territory that I outlined for myself of classic South Tacoma Way, there's no way to escape the fact that Bob's Java Jive is like, it is the theme of South Tacoma Way at its very heart. Um, and it's been so many things, right? So it was a breakfast place. It was a coffee shop. Eventually, it was a Polynesian uh, da themed dance club music joint. And back at that time, they had monkeys. Uh, they had like monkeys in cages in there and people I knew used to go and like feed the monkeys when they would have a beer. There were darker times, but uh, then it kind of hits, I think it's stride in really the like 80s and 90s when grunge makes the Java Jive quintessential cool. Um, and this was eventually purchased uh, by the current owners. And they're the ones who gave it the name Java Jive. If you go down there today on South Tacoma Way, it is still open. It will always look like it's closed. And that is the everlasting charm of Bob Java Jive. It is open and it is like, without a doubt, my favorite dive bar in, in the whole area there. And just to add a little bit to the lore, yes, uh, it definitely was a speakeasy during Prohibition. And... Uh, I've been able to go and look into the area that was the bar. It is at this point behind the wall where the men's urinals are now. And 
the way that it was set up is that it was a very narrow space. It wasn't like where you would hang out. It was a spot where you would go, you would get alcohol, and then you would come back out to the dance floor. And they wanted the entire thing to be as hush-hush as possible, right? Like you didn't want to have your main focus be the illegal activity. You wanted it to be people having fun. So you could dip back, get a drink, come back out and party. And a lot of those remnants are still there today, as well as if you've heard the rumor that Keanu Reeves uh, tried to purchase Bob's Java Dive, it's true. When he was here in 1990, uh, pictured here filming, um, oh shoot, I, I love you to death. He was a big patron at Bob's Java Jive and loved it so much that the only time that I know of that the owners were going to actually consider selling it was to Keanu Reeves. And the deal breaker was that he wanted to have it dismantled and then rebuilt piece by piece in Hawaii. And they're like, no, you can buy it, but it has to stay in Tacoma. It, it's natural habitat is the dark gray skies of the Pacific Northwest. It would never fly in Hawaii. And so while he still has the offer to purchase it, uh, it's not going to happen until he agrees to stay here in Tacoma with it. If you go inside, it is basically a museum to the greatness and eclecticness of the South Tacoma Way area over the last hundred years, really, if you look at it. Now, another one of the great buildings that's down there is this one designed for a local dentist, a guy named Paul Halleck. Uh, it still has the Halleck building sign. If you look on the far left there, this showed up in 1927 and was revolutionary for the neighborhood because it had a Safeway in the bottom. Uh, there was a hardware store in the 1930s, and it has always served as uh, a major sort of shopping center for the community until, of course, it after you know I-5 comes in. It really took a hard spot and was empty, but they are redeveloping the space down there. And you can see it's got a, a nice new coat of paint on it down there. It's starting to be redeveloped into something new. But this is what it looked like in the interior when it was a Safeway. And it came about at the time when everything was just a local grocery store. And so to have something as big as a Safeway, whew. I don't know if you guys remember when Rhinehouse came to Tacoma and everybody lost their mind. It was like a three month wait to get a table there. It was kind of the same thing with Safeway, I've been told. And it was just down the street from a, a local treasure. So if you look at that building today, right next door is the airport tavern. And a lot of people have asked me, uh, you know, what why is it called the airport tavern? Because there have been whispers that that's a historic thing. And in fact, it's true uh, because it was the tavern that serviced uh, the South Tacoma airport. And if you didn't know, yes, there was a South Tacoma airport. It was a 3,500 foot field uh, that was home to the Tacoma Aero Club. And it was there from 1936 until 1975, right about the same time that the Northern Pacific uh, railroad machine shops disappeared. And one of the coolest things about it for me was that it had a 2,000 foot trench for seaplane landings. <laughs> um, it was basically, so you can see right here, pretty much between 42nd and 48. Uh, so if you look at the map today, uh, you can see uh, Mule Tavern is right down there at the very bottom, right up here in that sort of empty space. Uh, would have been the the field for the South Tacoma Airport. And that's that's the legacy. The, the airport tavern maintains that story and still tries to keep the story of that airport alive. Because if you see that vacant field or the warehouses that now occupy the southern end of it, you would never know that it was there. But the pinball at airport tavern has no equal. Now, of the things that have disappeared forever, I think perhaps the most tragic for me is this parking lot. Uh, this is at 5244 South Tacoma Way, and you would never know that anything was here. But in 1880 until 1907, it was the Red Front Saloon, and it was like a boarding house for itinerant workers slash awesome bar and it's pictured right here. So this was the, the red front in its heyday in the late 1800s. It was 
one of the most referenced and popular saloons in the area there. And unfortunately, it's one of the few buildings that was just completely erased. But right next door, leaving behind a little hint of the legacy there, a new party institution showed up. And you can still see the remnants of it right here. So 5240, uh, which is now the church cantina, and there are little businesses here. This all used to be one lot, and it was Steve's Gay 90s. Now, it took over. You can see the entire thing here. Uh, it was originally called Steve's Cafe, but I don't think that did it justice. So they rebranded in, I think, the early 1940s, and it was a cocktail restaurant that served American food, smorgasbord style, and each room was like a different theme. And it was music, it was entertainment, it was Steve's gay 90s. It was the like coolest, most colorful place in all of South Tacoma. And the owner operator, Steve Peace, was the unofficial mayor of South Tacoma Way. Like if there was a competition for who was the biggest booster of South Tacoma Way, I think Steve would win hands down every single time. And he was instrumental in making the, the South Tacoma way become a destination again. And I think this is speculation on my part was pivotal in the rebranding of the neighborhood because originally uh, South Tacoma way was called the Edison neighborhood. And it was called Edison because when it was the railroad town and they were putting the post office and everything down there, the uh, owner of the Northern Pacific Railroad, let's see if I've got him for you guys right here, a guy named Henry Villard, just happened to be uh, personal friends with Thomas Edison, you know, like you do. And so he's like, let's name this town Edison. And it stuck. But the, the renaming and the sort of the phoenix rising from the ashes of South Tacoma Way, the name joining with the destination, I think was really popularized in this sort of era with Steve's gay 90s. And man, did he go all out. One of the things that I think is brilliant marketing and I'd love to see come to Tacoma today is that he bought uh, a Southern California streetcar and it would shuttle people to the cafe. <laughs> uh, so this is one of my favorite ones. This is people getting off the streetcar. He's got all his like staff out here promoting the whole thing. And they would go to Steve's Gay 90s. This is what it looked like on the inside. And it was quintessential Americana. And what I think is so great about that is that quintessential Americana should be the tagline for South Tacoma Way, as far as I'm concerned. One of the other structures that played a big role in developing the area is this one right here. So this is at 5415 South Tacoma Way. It's from 1919, again, that like 1920s push to make everything out of brick, and was a Hilliard and Jensen uh, project here. And what was special about this was it was the International Order of Odd Fellows. It was one of those fraternal lodges that operated as essentially early social security. You would join the lodge, you would pay your dues. If anything happened to you, your people would take care of you. And it was designed so that the upper floor would be meeting space for the, the odd fellows, but the bottom floor was designed to be leasable space for local businesses. And they really were active promoters and boosters for the idea that people should come out and do stuff to the area. So this is what the, the space looked like. I think this one is from probably 1977. And then they did a nice job uh, bringing it back, scraping off some of that facade and bringing it back to its original glory here. This is what it looks like today. Uh, I believe Mind's Eye Tattoo is still on the bottom there operating as a local business. One of the ones that you would miss and not even know it is this beauty right here. This is 5431 South Tacoma Way. It was um, a soft drink parlor for a period of time there, especially in the 1940s. They had a tavern there called the Coral Cabaret, uh, run by a no local guy named George Cosson and uh, Roger McDonald. And it was painted with murals of ranches and like horse tack. And you can still see some remnants of that in the Mule Tavern. They still got that like hand-painted Americana inside there, which I thank them every day for bringing that tradition onwards. This is the, what that building looks like today. 
and again the address pairs right back up 54 31 and i'll i'll transition back here so that you can see what i love about it is that that original window stuck around pretty pretty amazing uh, another one is the the Knights of Pythias, uh, Ladies Auxiliary Annex. Uh, you can't be a Knight of Pythia if you're a lady. And so they had their own annex out here on South Tacoma Way. And this building was originally constructed in 1926. It was Pete's Place Tavern for a while there. And it is on the corner today. And you can see it has definitely maintained a lot of that integrity to it. I love that. Another one that I sing the praises of all the time, you've already heard me mention it, is this is the Smith Hardware Building. This was built in 19, uh, ooh, wait, I think this was probably built in 1904 and then served as the original hardware store until 1908 and then um, transitioned hands a few times, but stayed as a, a like service area. I think it was a grocery store for a little while there, but primarily a hardware store over the years until it closed and then became the Oasis Beer Parlor, later known the Oasis Tavern until 1971, I think as long as they held on. And today the legacy continues because this is what it looks like now. It is the Mule Tavern. So this is when it was Oasis and it turned into the mule this was yeah this is what it used or is now and and i love that these have have stuck around right you've got those buildings and for a lot of them they've maintained their original use which you i mean if it wasn't a church it was one of three things it was a, a bar a hardware store or a grocer pretty much that's what you're looking at and it's nice to see more of these local businesses uh coming in and filling that space one of the ones that I think was really unique and is an interesting part to the South Tacoma Way history, uh, we'd be standing in front of it right now. We're looking south, down South Tacoma Way, uh, right across the street, uh, kitty corner from where we are right now. You can see the Safeway, a little bit of that Safeway sign. But today, uh, this is the corner, currently occupied by Fern Seed. But it was the, the establishment for a guy named Steve Armstrong, born in Oklahoma in 1931. And he started studying karate when he was 16. Uh, he serves in the Marines and then is in Japan. He goes to the Korean War. He uh, as part of the Presidential Honor Guard for Harry Truman. And then eventually finds himself in Okinawa where he meets and trains with the founder of a particular uh, branch of karate. And he like goes deep. He gets really intense into it and comes back to the United States and becomes Sensei Armstrong and establishes the first uh, karate school for this branch in his garage in 61 and eventually moves it out here. And it's credited as having been one of the first um like official karate schools in the united states back in the 60s uh he was friends with chuck norris uh and like they trained together and he he did his thing he was part of this like movement of bringing karate as an official thing to the united states in the 1960s right here in what is now fernseed and was previously a pawn shop on south tacoma way guys there's some real fame going on on this avenue and you could cruise right past it and not even know. Another <laughs> claim to fame is this bad boy right here. This is the Golden Glow Sunroom. It's one of the first uh, modern tanning parlors in the western part of the United States. And the Olympic Health Spa was located at 5206 South Tacoma Way back in 1967. This is what it looks like today. Uh, it's another one of those buildings that's going through a a glow up, if you will, fitting for what it was, uh, just down the street from this one. So uh, Bush's, uh, Bush's restaurant starts as a, a drive up joint in the 1960s because they've got all these, uh, well, 50s into the 60s, all these cars coming through, right? And so they're uh, one of the like places where they come out on the skates and give you service at the window. 
uh, after people stop using Highway 99 as like a recreational throughway, he converts really quickly and turns it into Bush's uh, round table and leans heavily into the idea of doing something themed and people <laughs> eat it up. So this ends up staying as a restaurant for a very long time until the building is left vacant. And if you go down South Tacoma Way today, you may recognize, pay special attention to the tower here. See uh, the, the thrust up there, which gets converted in the 60s to this particular tower. And you'll recognize it now as water concepts down there on South Tacoma Way. So when, you, when you're down there, that's, that's my big takeaway a lot of these are the same buildings and they haven't changed so dramatically that you can't recognize them. And it maintains its identity as a ah, legit Americana, hardworking, blue collar community that wants to take care of its own neighborhood. It is pure Tacoma at its finest. And thanks to the dedicated and tireless efforts of the Historic Preservation Office, a lot of these structures are on the Historic Register or are being looked after. And so now, as there's a development for the area, uh, an eye is always kept on the past, which, for those of you who know me, that's the thing. That's the goal, to, to maintain our narrative and legacy as we keep doing innovative things for the future. Whew, man. So I'm, I'm checking the, the questions here. If you guys have anything, let me know because I'm, I'm here for it. And I, what I love looking through these right now is that there is a tremendous amount of knowledge. And I think for me, that's the biggest, the biggest tragedy of not getting to do the walking tour is that um, just being able to hear people's like narratives, you know, from people who grew up in the community, like that guy who worked in the little cargo tunnel back in the early 1900s. We had another guy on the tour whose job, there's a bowling alley, one of the oldest bowling alleys in Washington state. And his job when he was like 13 was to take a bucket of sawdust uh, and mop up after people had, uh, we'll say hungover experiences in the alleys. And he remembers that fondly. And I was like, that's, ah, uh, those are golden nuggets. I hope they never go away. So please, to, to make my heart glow, put your personal stories, your, your deep knowledge of this area in the comments so that people can go back through it and connect and reminisce and remember and look forward to the future. That's our, that's our aim here. If you guys don't have anything else, uh, then I'm going to cut you loose tonight. But uh, thank the City of Tacoma and the Historic Preservation Office for putting that together. Uh, it is my pleasure to be a part of this. If you ever want to tip your guide, you can, always on the homepage of prettygrittytours.com, but completely unnecessary. We're just here to uh, make sure that history is preserved out here. And thanks to the City of Tacoma for getting this all put together and every day going out and making sure that these buildings have an opportunity to remain around here and aren't just bulldozed for something new and glossy. If you have questions or comments for the Historic Preservation Office, I know that they are tuned in and happy to answer anything you've got. But for me, this is it, my friends. I want you to keep that Tacoma love high in your heart. Get out there. Go explore. I'll see you guys soon.